Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and everyone in between. I'm Amanda. And I'm Emily. And today we have a bit of a different episode for you today. Uh, for in celebration of 15 days of Halloween, uh, we're going to talk about something that we have brought up quite a few times on our, in our video game uh, playthroughs, and that is vampire musicals. Yes. <laughs> the infamous vampire musicals, a very niche group yeah. of musical theater that I think well, as we're going to talk about, it's not super popular in America. No, but... and actually, in preparation for this, I have brought <laughs> my songbook for Tons de Vampire. Yes, which is one we're going to definitely talk about. <laughs> yes, so let's get started. I'll let you take it. Well, yeah, you're, you're, you're the one that did all the research for this, and so take it away. <laughs> yes, absolutely. So I'm sure, like, when you hear the words vampire musical... You probably the first things you think about are like forgetting Sarah Marshall. Yeah. My reign is done. It's time to die. Or Bob's Burgers, where they had that uh, <laughs> that Rocky Horror Picture Show yeah. spinoff that uh, they go to. It's not fair. Why don't Gene and I get to go see a vampire movie? Well, it's not just a movie. It's a dress-up, sing-along, interactive experience. There's an MC. People talk back to the screen. At one point, people even throw confetti. But... You guys are a little too young. It's it's rated R. What, for violence? Well, there's a couple swears, and a character gets drunk, and there's a, a lot of innuendo. We see stuff like that every day with you and Mom. But it's definitely not violent. There's not even any blood in it. It's it's campy. No blood? Oh, no, I don't want to go. Trust me, you're missing out. I mean, I don't think anybody should be really surprised by that. It seems like just about anything these days can become a musical, including stuff about Dracula. Yeah. That's very true. I mean, they turn movies into musicals all the time. You know, Little Shop of Horrors, it was a very, I, I would say as a very ridiculous concept that got turned into a musical and became very successful as a musical as well. Yeah, or uh, Honk. You think Honk about as well, yes. Duckling. Yeah, exa exactly. The Addams Family. Heathers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Beetlejuice also became a yes. musical. <laughs> my, my vocal coach was actually not a big fan of Beetlejuice. Oh, really? No, not at all. She didn't. Oh. She did not like the singing. <laughs> that makes me kind of sad. Yeah, Actually, at least at least for the for the tour that was here in DC. A yeah, while that's back. true. See, my uh, my first vocal coach, he was a huge fan of the Frank Wildhorn musicals, which I'm sure you're gonna get into because he did like the Dracula one that we're yeah. probably gonna cover today. Yeah, he, my vocal coach was a huge fan of those musicals exactly because they were much darker. And because and like, but also my that guy that guy who taught me sing was also the Beatle in Sweeney Todd for a very long time on stage. So of course he has that soft spot for it. Yeah, but yeah. So what I thought was really interesting when I was trying to take a look back on some of the history of Dracula is mm -hmm. if you look at the 1931 film, which really laid the foundation for all sort of representations of Dracula and vampires. You know, the yes. accent, the Deep Widow's Peak, uh, all of that. Bela Lugosi. <laughs> The collar thing. The collar thing. <laughs> he's got the collar thing. <laughs> That's how you know he's evil. He's got the collar thing. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so that, that film came out in 1931 starring Bela Lugosi, and it wasn't even adapted from the Bram Stoker no. novel. It was adapted from a stage play, which was first written in 1924. Mm -hmm. And Bela Lugosi starred in that original Broadway production of yes. Dracula from 1924. I think if I read it properly, he actually negotiated with Bram Stoker's estate uh, in order for the movie to be created, in order for them to have the rights to make this movie. Um, and he took a massive salary cut in order to play in this movie. Actually, the actor who played Jonathan Harker got paid a lot more than Bela Lugosi did. Yeah, Lugosi had such a sad history with Hollywood. I mean, he really it's, it's a really, it's a real shame because he's the one that started the whole universal horror, the monster genre and yet he was the most underpaid and most overly abused i would say mm -hmm. financially yeah. and what i thought was an interesting sort of mirror to was that frank langella actually starred in the 1977 revival of mm -hmm. the 1924 stage play mm -hmm. and then went on to play dracula in the 1979 movie 
Yeah, I think we we didn't really finish that one, but I do remember us watching part of it as well. And yeah, but what? Yeah, I wasn't sure how I felt about his performance, but yeah, go ahead and uh, kind of, I guess expand on that point a little bit further. Oh, it's just interesting how these actors move from Dracula on the stage to Dracula in the movies. I thought. Oh. Yeah, that's true. But anyway, so Dracula the musical was actually first written in English, and mm -hmm. it premiered in California in 2001 before moving on to Broadway in uh, later that year. And there was there were several rewritings of this show before it moved to Broadway. Um, and it, even then, it only ran for I think about 150 shows, mm -hmm. maybe a little more than that, before it got a bunch of negative reviews and completely shut down. Yeah, which is a shame because James Barbour has such an, an amazing voice. I hope I'm pronouncing his name properly, but he has such an incredible voice. He was so he actually was not in the play. Oh, he was in the concept album. Oh, and he's problematic. Oh, is oh he is in that case. Never mind. <laughs> he's a sex offender. Is he? Yeah, let me pull that up actually. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, he, so he was on the concept album for this for this play, Dracula the Musical. He did not actually star in the show. Uh-huh. Um I just read two, what was on the Wikipedia page. <laughs> yeah, in 2008, he pled guilty to two counts of endangering the welfare of a child and admitted to engaging in sexual activities with a 15-year-old. No. I can't listen to the album anymore now. I know. I know. I'm sorry. Which is such a shame because I love the song at last. I know. Oh. So that's actually an interesting album. If you ever uh, watch like the German version mm -hmm. of this play, which we're going to get into later, yes, uh, that song does not appear, but it does appear in uh, a Korean, at least a Korean version that I've seen. Mm-hmm. So what is interesting, though, is that the original costumes from that Broadway show, the English version Broadway show, were, are actually on display at the Wick Theater in Florida, oh, cool. which has a Broadway costumes museum. Dracula did not do well in the States. Uh, however, apparently, if, <laughs> if Americans find a, find a play odd and off-putting, it does really well in German language, German speaking country. So, so that was the. <laughs> so I wanted to just ask. That was the reason why I didn't do well. People found it odd and off putting because I did read that there was like a sex scene. In yeah, there, there was a were... nude scene. Okay. Uh, at least in the California version, from what I read. Yeah. Uh, just overall, it didn't flow. It wasn't. It just did not see, receive a lot of big reviews, and I wasn't able to find or a lot of positive reviews rather, and I really wasn't able to find uh, too much on those reviews ah damn it i'm trying to i found one new york times article that oh but of course you got to pay says for the it. bat awakens and yawns oh uh, but i'm not able to read it because i refuse to pay <laughs> well i guess that means they just found it boring um but yeah i, I at least i prefer the german lyrics when I, even though i don't speak german you know just the translation on screen just seemed to make a bit more sense or flow a little bit better and mm -hmm. some of the lyrics in the English version, when I first listened to it, just felt a bit awkward. At least that's my personal opinion. Yeah. So I was under the impression that it was written and composed in Germany first, and then it was translated to English, and that's why it sounded a little awkward. Yeah. Although in Germany, it proved to be a huge, huge hit. Uh, it still runs in Germany. Yeah. Um, still runs uh, in both Germany and Austria, I mm -hmm. should say. Uh, with some pretty heavy hitters uh, from yeah. the German musical scene, musical theater scene, like Thomas Borchert and Uwe mm -hmm. Krüger. Mm -hmm. um, what's interesting is, though, the uh, woman who played Mina in the uh, version that we've seen, which we'll link down below. Everything, all the clips, all the clips I'm playing here, we're going to link down below. Mm -hmm. um, she is actually American as well. Yeah. Auditioned in New York, apparently, and then was told, oh, by the way, this plays in German, so you gotta learn German. Yes. So she learned German. <laughs> Actually, yeah. My Again, the first vocal teacher who likes the dark stuff, he told me that a lot of American singers will go over to Germany as well. So, we're gonna get into this later, but, like, one of the uh, men, the men, one of the men who played the Count in Tons de Vampire, he's also American, and he just oh, wow. learned German and went over to Germany. Drew Sarek, yeah. I think? But yeah, okay. continue. <laughs> but yeah, it, so it wasn't just in Germany. I also found that this became a big hit in Asia. Mm -hmm. And I was able to find uh, both Korean and Japanese versions. And it, what was interesting about the Japanese version is that in at least one production, they had a woman play Dracula. Really? Okay, so her name is Yoko Wow. Please pardon me if I'm mispronouncing her name. Mm -hmm. 
Um, but she actually, it looks like she actually specialized in playing male characters. Really? Uh, from, from her former work, which was an all-female musical theater troupe. Um, where women play every single role in Broadway-style productions of Western musicals. Okay, okay. So she was a member of this group, and then they cast her to play Dracula in the Dracula musical adaptation. Well, you know, in a way that makes sense, because, I mean, we've mentioned this on a few of our gaming videos, but vam but I guess it tends to get lost because now we're talking about this specific topic, but vampires are supposed to re represent, like, sexual deviancy, or, like, exploring different sorts of sex that are seen as unacceptable. Mm. And I actually, I saw that a little bit of this in a What We Do in the Shadows uh, discussion in on YouTube. Uh, well, it was, it was the comment section of, of a clip from the show, What We Do in the Shadows, and how someone said, Taika writes all, Taika Waititi writes all of his characters as bisexual, and someone took issue with that. Huh. And, but I was actually, but you know, people are, uh, people in the comment section were saying, you know, Vampires are supposed to explore this thing, and I think that's very true. You see that in Vampire the Masquerade as well. A lot of characters are pansexual, or even if they have a preference towards male or female, they're usually open to, you know, a lot of different partners. It's like these are, uh, this is kind of what they were meant to explore in Carmilla and in Dracula, just different parts of sexuality that we're not really comfortable speaking about. Mm -hmm. So to me, it makes sense. Well, and also, like, it's interesting because, like, nowadays that's not as taboo as it used to be. No. Which is great. But what was also cool was that in the Korean version, I guess the guy who has been playing Dracula for the longest, for many, many years at this point, is actually a retired K-pop star. Or not oh, quite yeah. retired. Or not quite him. retired. He's, like, in his 30s or something. <laughs> so he's a bit too old for their idea of an idol, but, you know, he's still working. Yeah, he's still working in musical theater and he released a single, like, last year, I think. Oh, good for him. Um, and it looks like it was, he was actually still playing Dracula up through last year, but it had to take a break because of the pandemic or being yeah, go on hiatus because of the pandemic. So I wasn't, and I wasn't really able to see any updates since then. Um, also this video is entirely in Korean and I do not speak <laughs> Korean, <laughs> so I apologize. I cannot read it. Uh, but yeah, so it's like this play has also been super popular as well. And what I found from this one is they did include some of the original concept music from uh, the original writing of the show, which includes At Last. Yeah, okay. That song. Um, You're going to have from... to send me a version of it in the Korean if you can find it on YouTube, because now I'll... I need to listen to something else. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I will. I will. Um but yeah, it seems like they sort of expanded further on the story than they did in the German version. Uh, and it's supposed to be a lot more, a lot closer to like the Gary Oldman, Winona Ryder version. Okay, good. Like, because like, I think that was a one criticism that I had about the German version, even though it was much, it was very well done. It was like kind of rushed. It's like, boom, they're in love. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Kind of and here it seems like there was still kind of a more of that concept was explored. Okay, good. Yeah. So again, not even adapted from Bram Stoker. Yeah. <laughs> adapted from a movie. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of movie adaptations, mm -hmm. I think that's a good segue into talking about the concept known as the horror comedy. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I know what you're going to talk about next. Oh yes. So to, before we even get into Tan de Vampire and the history behind that, I will say I did some background on horror comedies. Sorry, if you can hear my cat, he's being weird. <laughs> That's okay. As always, as usual. Um, but yeah, the horror comedy was actually something that, like, you know, there was that big universal monster movie boom um, with these great monsters. And that actually led, lent itself very nicely into some of the big comedy acts of the day. And one of the biggest ones was Abbott and Costello. Mm -hmm. And they came out with a series of movies where they met all the universal horror monsters. Yeah, Wolfman, Frankenstein, Dracula. I think they, yeah, a lot of movies I think were made. Yeah, even it, like the big one that I remember was Abbott and Costello meet Frankenstein, which came out in 1948. And like what you alluded to, like Bela Lugosi is something I, I found while researching the horror comedy is that Bela Lugosi often did reprise his role as Dracula in a, in a lot of these campy movies, which I yeah. felt kind of bad, bad about. Yeah. But the nice one about this one, when they meet Frankenstein is that they also had Lon Chaney Jr. 
yes. he reprises his role repri- reprise his role as the wolf man yes and then he also played frank and then they also had a uh, glenn strange play the frankenstein's monster who did play uh frankenstein in a bunch of universal films mm-hmm. um as well in, in addition to boris karloff yeah i think the other interesting thing that that's relevant to our upbringing is that uh <laughs> boris karloff was supposed to play a joke frankenstein monster in the movie arsenic and old lace yes <laughs> <laughs> like which, I, no sorry go ahead <laughs> no which we love that movie we watched that like every single year yes. around halloween with yes. our family growing up watching that and there's a joke in the movie and uh if you don't know if you're not familiar with this what this movie is about is essentially Cary grant plays the only sane person in his family he, sane, he finds yes. out yeah he <laughs> finds out that his aunts who he previously thought were these sweet innocent old ladies are actually serial killers yeah who think they're doing a nice thing by murdering lonely old geezers yeah meanwhile his brother jonathan is a, actually a well-known serial killer on the run Mm -hmm. and one of his and one of his shticks is that he always gets plastic is that he brings this plastic surgeon with him Mm -hmm. played by uh peter lore peter lore also igor also known as igor very famous horror actor and his plastic surgeon will always change up jonathan's face so that he so that he can further hide from the authorities yeah and the, the joke in this movie at this point is that peter laura has just watched frankenstein <laughs> and made and changed uh jonathan's face to look like boris Karloff and frankenstein so everybody in the movie <laughs> whenever they encounter jonathan they're like well i bet you're about to tell me you're boris Karloff." <laughs> <laughs> and i think actually one of the uh, please correct me if i'm wrong but i think on stage the character Jonathan was actually played by Karloff, but he just oh. wasn't available for the movie. I, I think because I know he was supposed to act. He was supposed to be Karloff. Anyway, Karloff was okay with playing joke movies. Uh, Abbott and Costello came out with a bunch of joke movies, and most notably for this discussion about vampire musicals, Roman Polanski mm-hmm. came out with a joke movie. So yeah, the very problematic Roman Polanski. Came out with this movie, which in the UK was originally released as Dance of the Vampires. Uh, but in everywhere else is called The Fearless Vampire Killers or Pardon Me But Your Teeth Are In My Neck. <laughs> and it is, it's, it, this is also kind of a notable film because it's one of Sharon Tate's last films before she was murdered. Yeah. Um, but so the, the Fearless Vampire Killers, a.k.a. Tans de Vampire, is was adapted into a horror comedy stage musical Mm -hmm. in german and the best part or do you or do you want to lead up to the best part (laughs) uh well let me just finish up with this background yeah a little bit before (laughs) then you can lead up to the best part yeah and polanski actually directed the original production um you know it it still plays in germany the united i think it place in the united states let me see i do remember i saw one of uh i i have a german friend on facebook who i met when i went abroad for the first time and he did see tons de vampire very recently and he still lives in germany so. okay so he, saw <laughs> he did post yeah he posted it about it not obviously not during covid this was before covid but yeah and another thing to tie this back to dracula thomas borshit 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 mm-hmm. please pronounce his I, I, how do you pronounce his last name i want to do that properly borshit Borshit. Yeah, Thomas Borshit was also the lead in this one as well. Yeah, okay. And it Originally. looks like this this Tans de Vampire also failed in, in, in America. Uh, it says uh, New York Times said it was one of the costliest failures in Broadway history, losing roughly $12 million, eclipsing the musical version of Carrie. I'm surprised that they didn't uh, give Spider-Man that honor. Also, see, I... how much how much did did Spider Man turn off the bar- off the dark lose? Yeah, because I also have just now learned that there was a musical version of Carrie. <laughs> Having run on Broadway for over three years, the production failed to make back its seventy five million dollar cost, the largest in Broadway history, with investors reportedly losing sixty million dollars. Wow. And this was in twenty thirteen when Tansa Vampire failed in two thousand three. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, that was before then. 
we have Tanz der Vampir, which is a ridiculous concept. Uh, essentially what is going on, it's a spoof off of Dracula and Van Helsing. What you have is you have this kooky professor um, and his assistant. Mm -hmm. And they go to this rural town where they're looking for to find evidence of vampires. Mm -hmm. Uh, during the process, uh, the assistant falls in love with a local innkeeper's daughter who is seduced by the local Count. vampire, Count. <laughs> um, but the... <laughs> you can't even get through the plot! <laughs> I don't want to say it myself about part of the joke, so I'll just play a clip right here. Mm. And uh, this is this is a clip of the innkeeper after he has been bitten by a vampire, <laughs> um, and he wakes up as a vampire. Oh. And his uh, his uh, one of the women that works in his inn um, that he's been trying to get with. <laughs> yeah, she's attempting to ward him off with a cross. Yeah. <laughs> It's weird. Um, that's the that's part of the joke is that the the vampires are Jewish, so things like crucifixes don't work. Don't on actually them. work, yeah. Uh, yeah. And then at the end of the musical, there's just this random rock number that has absolutely nothing to do with the entire plot. <laughs> oh, but the best part is one of the songs that happens in the middle that the count and the innkeeper's daughter sing together. And the it first is... time I watched this. <laughs> It took me a little bit, and then I realized... Fantastische Träume, aber wenn ich aufwach, quält mich die Angst. Manchmal in der Nacht liege ich im Dunkeln und warte, doch worauf ich warte, ist mir nicht klar. Manchmal in der Nacht spüre ich die unwiderstehliche Versuchung einer dunklen Welt. Verlieren heißt sich befreien, du willst dich in mir erkennen, was du erträumst wird Wahrheit sein, nicht und niemand kann uns trennen, tauch mit mir in die Dunkelheit ein, zwischen Abgrund und Schein, verbrennen wir die Zweifel und vergessen die Zeit, ich höre dich ein in meinen Schatten und trag dich wahr. Meine Welt. Totale Finsternis, ich falle und nichts, was mich hält. It was a German translation <laughs> of Total Eclipse of the Heart. <laughs> <laughs> I will say though, 
the one thing that I love about this, well, not there are a lot of things I love about this musical. I think this is one of the best musicals I've ever seen. And I, think I saw it's one of like, the dumbest musicals. I've dumbest. Ever seen. <laughs> no, but I, I mean, look at the visuals, the dancing, the the choreography is is very brilliant because they use doubles as well yeah. for um so they have professional dancers versus professional actors slash singers yeah yes and so that they have doubles for like the scenes where there are supposed to be mirrors and it's actually a really cool effect or like dream sequences they'll have doubles appear as well so that the uh, uh sp- actors and singers can keep on singing and then you have like the visual of the characters like doing their own thing and i like i love this musical i love it <laughs> And I just, I I wish I could see it live, but obviously I'm not in Germany, but, you know, I'll just deal with, you know, the kind souls that upload it to YouTube. Yeah, that's the other thing. (laughs) This this goes against everything I believe about with regards to copyright law. However, if you are so inclined, like I said, we're going to have everything linked down below. um, So you can see the uh, musicals, the bootlegged version (laughs) of these musicals, if you are so inclined. Yeah. And actually, do go see it live if you have the chance. If we, by any chance, have someone in Germany watching and you haven't seen it yet, go see it. <laughs> Absolutely. Or Austria. Or Austria, yes. Austria, true. All right. So that is our little spiel on vampire musicals. Yes. And I had a lot of fun. I like just having casual discussions like this. Yeah, and just being able to kind of talk about, like, explain some of these weird little bits and bobs of of information that we're interested in yeah that we keep <laughs> referencing that uh, we have referenced vampire musicals so much during our videos we reference them during vampire obviously i believe we reference yeah I, the first one that comes to mind is vampire how many times do we reference the dracula musical in vampire a lot i mean we play a lot of dra- we play a lot of vampire games well you yeah, do. We do yeah well th- yeah well I, I yeah this is the thing I, I posted this in our shadows of new york you know emily's usually the dark one but who was into the dark stuff first it was me it was me <laughs> <laughs> All right. What did you guys think? Did you enjoy this kind of more casual, informative type of video? Have you seen any vampire musicals beyond Bob's Burgers? Let us know down in the comments section below. Smash that like button if you if you, if you like this video. And please don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you haven't subscribed already. Um, but this is Emily. And this is Amanda. We're Amadem. And we'll see you guys in the next video. Bye. Bye.